time as much as it is learning about, writing down what you learned. Did you and Ms. Lee and Ms. Avina talk about that? Yeah. Okay, so just be thinking about the knowledge you have. And then underneath it, let's read it together. One of the biggest challenges to teaching in these science labs is definitely um, the sound. And for years, we've had this discussion back and forth between all the science teachers about what we can do about the sound and what sort of um, solutions we can come up with because we really feel like it affects the quality of our lessons and, um, and, it, and it should be better. very hard to filter that out. Students will complain that, um, you know, could you please tell them to turn the videos down, like if they're watching a video and then in the next room we can hear. And you're always wondering, is the lesson going to be loud today or is it going to be quiet today? And, and I mean, and part of the thing as a teacher is you don't want to really contain excitement. We came in to provide a solution to a space that had um, high reverberation and low speech clarity. Everything's really hard surfaces, so there's nothing absorbing any kind of sounds from chairs moving, from kids um, banging a pencil on a table. So it made it really difficult for a teacher to try to speak to the class and for a student to understand. And it says, how do you know? Okay, so make sure that you're really doing your best job. The work in memory we have has a limited capacity. And if that limited capacity is taxed completely with just uh, understanding and identifying what was being said, nothing is left for memorizing and elaboration of that message. Low grades and bad acoustics go together. So if you are sitting in the back of a classroom where you have very bad acoustics and you have low grades, not the whole of that burden falls on your intellectual capacities as a pupil. Some of it may well fall on the bad acoustics you have in your classroom. We are performing the installation over on a weekend and we hope that the kids find the space more comfortable to listen in, uh, learn in, to be more focused in, and for the teachers as well. Well, I'm just hoping that um, it'll be very quiet and clear and that you'll sort of feel the silence around your speaking, you know what I mean? So you speak, but you feel the silence after you're done <laughs> and, um, you know, not having to work so hard with your ears. It'll be interesting to see when I go back into the classroom what it's like to teach not under those circumstances anymore. Oh my gosh, this looks so different. What do you think? Oh my god. This morning when I came in and I saw Irene and Sandy in here, I um, I mean the first thing I noticed was when we started to speak, I, I got a huge smile across my face because it was never an experience like that before of talking to them. And I just felt like I wasn't having to do the work that I was having to do in the past to, to, to process what they were saying. It was quicker, it felt like a faster communication. And um, I, I, already, I already liked it. It sounded more quiet, more like I could hear the teachers more clearly. The population is more than one of the same species. That would be, if I, if I said fruit flies, it would be population, biotic, right? And organisms, plural. It's much better because now I can hear better. I can hear them speaking better and I can follow directions and it's easier for me to know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, it sounds like peaceful. Really. Good.